My first channel I started 11 years ago, and that was actually not a gaming channel, but a real life skit channel. And it was just me and my two neighbors. It was literally all about who I could find, who I could pull in, and who I could keep watching my videos. So when I made the transition from uh, kind of live action skits type content to gaming, I had just got my first Xbox 360. That was basically the jumping off point to start recording gameplay. I started off doing a couple Call of Duty montages and things like that, and eventually I started playing a game called Skyrim. Need something? Hmm? So I started off doing a lot of tutorials just because the tutorials were something that was easy content. I didn't have to let my personality shine through. I was pretty much still scared at the time to even use my microphone even though I had one, but I wasn't sure of myself and didn't have the confidence yet. I think the turning point was when I started kind of getting positive comments saying, hey, you should show us how to do this. You should show us how to do this. Make sure you use your microphone in your next video. It's really helpful. Hey guys, what's going on? This is NoahJ456. And for those of you who have downloaded the Dongard DLC, it comes out for PS3 and PC next month. It's such a big thing when you're on the come up on YouTube and Twitch and to just have those people who encourage you, push you, you, whether it be people in your real life, whether it be people who are just online have never met you before. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456. Hey guys, what's up? This is NoJ456, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to get underneath the crane in the new map. Uh, if they give you that kind of push off, I it really encouraged me and it helped me kind of break out of my shell of just this like really young kid trying to just have something that was fun. I did it all as just a fun hobby, something I wanted to actually just show with the world, and that was a really big point whenever uh, whenever I just started getting those fans. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456, and yes, the rumors are true. What you are seeing on your screen right now is Black Ops 2. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456, and this is how to get the Dancing on My Grave achievement. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456, and as you can see on my last video, I got over 100 likes, so uh, I'm posting this video, so let's try to get over 100 again. When Black Ops 2 came out, Black Ops 2 Zombies was a huge hit. There were tons of people searching around it, and there weren't very many Call of Duty Zombies YouTubers, so I kind of injected myself into the Zombies community. What is going on? My name is NoJ456, and this is my 30,000 subscriber thank you and giveaway video. Have Having fun with gaming has always kind of been something that's really important to me, and I strongly believe if you're not having fun with what you're doing, it's it's not gonna last. My name is Noah J four five six. The first battle royale that came out was H one Z one, and that was revolutionary at the time. You're gonna be dropped into a lobby with 150 players. Who's gonna come out on top? And H one Z one was the first one to do it in a manner that everyone kind of resonated with. That was just such an important time when all the Battle Royals were on the come up to play with as many people as I could and just have as much fun as Battle Royals had to offer. When Fortnite came out, the second I picked up the Battle Royale, when it launched in its alpha, I think I was probably one of the first people to ever actually try it out. I was immediately hooked. It's NoJ456 and today we are playing Fortnite, ladies and gentlemen. I was planning on streaming for two hours that day. I think I streamed for about 10. It was the most fun I had had in a multiplayer game ever. What? I was so far behind the tree. Everyone was on all the time. There was always people to play with. There was always someone that you could have fun with. It was the biggest sensation I think the gaming world has ever had in terms of a multiplayer game. Welcome everybody to the Fortnite Pro -Am. The Fortnite Pro-Am was probably one of my favorite events of all time. Pretty incredible to see just how many people had actually shown up to this event. We saw just rows and rows of seats, tons of people just screaming and cheering as we walked down the middle aisle, millions of people watching online. It was quite a show. So for game one, it was probably the most stressful situation of my life. I was being shot at. I think Nate was in the top three. He got eliminated. All of a sudden was in a 1v1 situation. Last player down below, Kinstar. Oh my goodness. The rocket oh! shot. He's able to stay alive because he used the bounce. Yeah! Yeah! Probably one of the craziest feelings of my life. It almost didn't feel real at that time. <laughs> done for. I thought he had the, the breakout from under me. I thought I was going to be falling without a bounce pad, but I just decided I'm not going to die to storm. I'm just going to jump in and uh, it worked out somehow. So We'll just, we'll just, we'll just ride off. Oh damn, we got to get you a jersey now, don't we? Oh, oh, apparently it's in the mail. Dude, that'd be dope. Wait, why are you wearing that? Oh my. 
You got the wrong jersey on, bro. This guy's over here like, oh yeah, it'll be in like next week, something like that. It's My cool, boy. Man. Put the right one on. So when Matt approached me, he kind of said, hey, we've talked a lot in the past. We've played games for years. We've been friends for years. And at the time, 100 Thieves was still in its early stages. It had been announced. They had a few people on board, but it was still very much in its starting stages. And he said, hey, I would love if you would be a part of this. And I could not have been happier to join it. It, it was, it just made so much sense. And it was just a perfect fit. All right, without further ado, um, let's go ahead and get started here. Dude. It's impossible to fight anyone because you just get shot in the back constantly. So with all content creators, you almost feel trapped in your role. You have a certain game that you play, everyone's expecting that of you, and it almost puts you in this little bubble that is so hard to break out of. It's one of the hardest things about content creation, in my opinion. No, that was so bad. That was so bad for me. So a couple months ago, it definitely, I think for me and a lot of other people, kind of started hitting that downtrend. It was almost too good to be true for a long time. No, oh, I got a headshot! Just a lot of different things, a combination of me playing it so much, a combination of just the average player getting so much better and it becoming harder and harder to win games, getting more frustrating. It kind of, for me, lost that just spark of the every single game was gonna be an absolute blast. And that's kind of where the, the magic of Battle Royale kind of went on that downturn and and that's where it kind of started getting stale for me. We're here today because I wanted to make a video talking about everything that's been going on in the last few days in the zombie community. Blue screens. It, the, my bullets. Oh my god. Uh, you, you have to. No, dude. Oh my god. Oh my dude. god. And it crashed. Where's the controller? Old trusty. I think my community kind of noticed, but it was this hard thing where even if they saw that I wasn't having as much fun with it, they still wanted to see the content. It was almost becoming the game was more important than the personality. And I think the community kind of felt that. And I think that uh, that was something that was really, I was really, really struggling with and uh, just kind of worried about every single day. Kind of seemed like the universe <laughs> decided for me at that point. So then we'll go pick up from that part yeah. as well. Um, can you just walk me through how it happened? like what you were doing right before and then just the steps through the entire thing. <clears throat> Come on, Moose, Moosey. So at the time I was working on a Fortnite video and there was this huge clap of lightning and my power went out. Every single smoke detector started going off and I was like, wow, that must have hit really, really close. Listen, come on, Moose. Moose, come here. And then I definitely figured out that something was off. I grabbed my dog, ran outside, and as I was running out, saw smoke coming down through my air vents in the house. They're actually going to be going up on the roof. Oh, I'm shaking. I can't stop shaking. When the lightning hit, it actually jolted through the entire house and it carried through every single socket. And basically anything that was plugged in at the time, TVs, game systems, my entire PC streaming setup, basically anything that uses a power outlet to charge got completely fried. Everything was toasted and it just basically destroyed thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So when that all happened, it took me out of commission, obviously, for a few days to kind of start rebuilding it, getting a new computer, getting new monitors, new mouse, new keyboard, everything like that. I think it was a big turning point for me realizing kind of like just doing what you love is so important because I mean anything can happen at any moment. I was just honestly so thankful I was home for my dog and just to get to get myself out of the house to get him out of the house and um, it was it was just honestly a big turning point for me. Everything will be okay and uh, I'm fine and Martina's fine and Moose is fine and that's really all that matters. I'm gonna go I'm gonna wrap up the video. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for watching and I'm really sorry that this happened um, and just bear with me uh, while I try to get everything back together. So basically 2018 ended with everything I had built for years and years and years and it's weird how you kind of build up a personal connection even if they're just things that it's kind of like what you what your livelihood is what you do every single day you wake up and you go to that setup uh just collecting different pieces from throughout the years that just make your make your streams better make your setup better 
all of that was just basically destroyed in an instant and along with that having to move houses and everything like that it was definitely a big turning point not only for me but also my content and kind of putting back kind of where my values lied and making sure I'm having fun so that everyone else who's watching can feel that and have fun just by kind of witnessing and viewing what I'm doing. I knew that whenever I came back, I wanted to have that kind of personal connection again. And I wanted that first stream back to be the turning point. Oh, well, well, here we are. The first stream of New Year, New Me. <laughs> uh, here, I'll go ahead. And, I'll, I'll go ahead and just read you guys what I tweeted out. I don't want to be a zombies YouTuber anymore. I want to be just a YouTuber that uploads zombies when I feel like doing so. There is a toxic part of my fan base that dislikes anything that's not zombies, and they've been holding me back from trying new things. 2019, that changes. After a few days, I did something I had never done before, and I picked up the controller and I started my stream of Super Smash Bros, which was something I had never dreamed I would be able to play. It's a game I love. People just were so happy to see. And from there, it kind of just flipped the switch of, I think the real connection and the real purpose of what I want to do is having fun with what I'm doing and connecting with people no matter what game I'm playing. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more games, a lot more fun things that I normally wouldn't do. I, I'm basically not going to confine myself to just struggling to figure out what I want to do. Hopefully you guys will stick with me. And just people just giving their support on something new that was very similar to what happened when I first started actually using my microphone. The same thing when I started using Facecam. The same thing that basically allowed me to say, hey, it's not about the game, it's kind of about corny, but the journey that you take with it. It's just you and then the person watching and you can kind of make that connection. Having basically a lot of the stuff that made me fall in love with YouTube and really kind of throw my life into it and, and everything, it's it's the same kind of connection that I had then and making that with my viewers and with the content that I'm doing now has just been so much more rewarding and I, I couldn't be more happy about it.